Soon after the COVID-19 outbreak in Ontario, hospitals needed to react fast. Surgeries were resource heavy, costing three times as much as other hospital stays and requiring several medical professionals. Naturally, non-urgent surgeries had to be paused. Just within six months, an 84-week backlog had accumulated. Even under normal circumstances, the lack of consistent staffing has led to negative surgical outcomes globally. To address this, we look to the role of the scrub nurse. They must deliver tools to the surgeon during operation, in addition to more complex duties such as maintaining a sterile environment and making operation-specific preparations. There is an opportunity to automate the repetitive task of tool delivery within the operating room, increasing the overall productivity. This is not an easy task. Previous attempts at automating tool delivery did not achieve commercial success due to difficulties in replicating nuanced aspects of tool delivery and the inability to generalize a solution for the dynamic needs of the operating room. Hello, my name is Ee. Hi, I'm Sean. Hi, my name is Brenna. And I'm Debbie. And under the guidance and supervision of Dr. Stuart McLaughlin and Dr. Brandon DeHart, as well as in collaboration with the Waterloo Robohub Research Facility, we present to you a helping hat, the surgical assistant. For any product to be viable commercially, there must be sufficient financial incentive. A helping hand would introduce savings in scrub nurse time. Based on the median surgical nurse salary of $85,000 per year in Canada, the average cost of a scrub nurse per operation is 56 Canadian dollars. The solution we will present to you today is projected to result in $26.50 in potential savings per operation, corresponding to over $26.5 million annually in Canada alone. We'd like to automate the scrub nurse's task of tool delivery in the OR. For a human, this involves determining what tool is needed, finding it on the tray, picking it up, passing it to the surgeon safely, and returning the old tool. Humans can do many complex tasks implicitly, but what is trivial for a human may pose a major challenge for an automated system. For a scrub nurse, the task of passing a tool to a surgeon can be seen solely as the five distinct steps listed previously. However, a more detailed breakdown is required for a robotic system. These details can be achieved by applying different technologies for each high-level step. Natural language processing, coupled with a lookup table, can be used to process the surgeon's words into a request and determine the required tool. To view the tray and identify the requested tool, computer vision plus perception can be applied. Next, tactile gripping and manipulation can be used to grasp and maintain sterility of the tool. Manipulation and environmental mapping allow the robot to move its arm to the surgeon and safely orient the tool, all while avoiding obstacles. Finally, to return the old tool to the tray, the robot can be given the command to repeat the previous steps in reverse order. With this breakdown structure, this is a multifaceted project that would take many hours to accurately develop. To ensure the project would be achievable with the available resources, the scope was limited from the product requirements. As a result, input processing and returning old tools were not tackled for ME481-482. With this in mind, let's take a look at our solution. To move or position the tool in 3D space, the Kinoma Gensry manipulator with 7 degrees of freedom has been selected. So why did we choose this manipulator? It can be ROS controlled and it has an Intel RealSense camera installed. Also, it is designed to be a collaborative robot, which is safe for direct human interaction. Additionally, its redundancy allows for more flexibility in its movement. Considering the possibility of implementing this system in the operating room in the future, it will also be easy to switch to a Canova manipulator that is medical grade. For tool identification, there are many alternatives that could be considered as potential solutions, such as applying a color code or another form of unique identifier tag on each of the tools. While these are reliable solutions, they are not scalable in the industry, as existing tools will need to be modified and future tools must have identifiers manufactured into them. Instead, an object detection method using computer vision was implemented, using the shape of the tool itself for information. This prototype uses an open source YOLO V3 vision model to get fast yet accurate object detection results from the onboard Intel RealSense camera to identify between a scalpel and a mallet. This method can be scaled up in the future simply by training a new model with new tools. 
In terms of motion planning, the main tasks are moving manipulator to the tool ID position, then to the tool pickup position, and finally to the handoff position. Also, safety protocols for object collisions are implemented. Inverse kinematics are done through setting the Cartesian coordinates at the ending vector. Within OR settings, a sterile environment is required. Commonly for robotic devices within the OR, a plastic sterile cover is draped over the arm. However, due to the pinch points of the gripper, this solution was not feasible for the end effector. So, how can we solve this problem? We decided to go with the disposable finger design. For our prototype, we have 3D printed finger links that can be re replaced after each surgery. Additionally, to increase the gripper's adaptability to different tool shapes and sizes, rubberized soft foam has been placed on the inside of the finger pads to mold to the tool it is holding. For this M working MVP, and to fit the scope of the project into ME481 and 482, we have designed a foam cutout to place the tools in. This allows us to ensure the tools are in the same orientation for tool identification and manipulation. The gripper is commanded to the fully closed position during gripping as there is a maximum gripping force constraint. After successfully picking up the tool, the controller constantly monitors the gripping force to ensure secure grip. As always, safety first, to avoid injuries, before handing off the tools to the surgeons. It is important to orient the tools to a safe position. For example, the handle of the scalpel should face the surgeon instead of its blade. Thus, after detecting the tool's current orientation and identifying its end of location, the quaternions are set and the tool is oriented. Finally, the tool is handed off to the surgeon when they have it in their grasp. This is done by measuring the change in the manipulator joint torques as the surgeon begins to tug on the tool. By comparing this to a baseline value due to gravity alone, the tool is released only when the surgeon is ready to accept it. This solution was chosen as it places the strengths of the collaborative robot. Our experiments showed that using external sensors instead to detect when a hand is enclosed around a tool was much less robust and was prone to false positive readings. Functional verification has no doubt been a challenge for this project. Due to the current circumstances, all operation and validation of robot function had to be performed remotely, which has been made possible through the help from the RoboHub team. Each section of our design can be verified empirically through a combination of the onboard and external camera feeds. Despite not being able to interact with the robot, we can verify the functionality of the manipulation, identification, gripping, and orientation. The validation of the tool handoff step could not be accomplished for the same reason. This is left as an untested working solution. The most important verification we could perform, however, was assessing the project's fit in the operating room. In a survey distributed to both medical professionals and the general public, most respondents believed that the product had a high potential for use in the OR for specific applications. A helping hand has demonstrated the potential to be viable within the operating room. To help get it there, some additional functionality would be required, including the addition of surgeon audio cue processing, increased range of compatible tools, dynamic mapping of the environment, and the ability to return used tools. It is also imperative that the product is demonstrated to surgeons and their feedback is incorporated to iteratively improve the product. This capstone experience was unlike any other. Due to COVID-19, the entire project was completed remotely. We started this project in four different cities, and even to this day, we have never once touched the robot or enter the room that the footage in this video was shot in. The RoboHub team helped us immensely in setting up a remote connection to the robot and were our hands, eyes, and ears for physical troubleshooting. Believe it or not, our advisor, Dr. Brandon DeHart, built a second robot to press the reset button on this one when we encountered a memory leak issue. We are grateful for the support we've received and are proud of ourselves for completing this project despite the added challenges. Throughout the project, we faced many technical challenges and had the opportunity to hone our engineering skills as a result. That being said, one of the biggest lessons we learned was that collaborating with and helping one another and having strong mentorship and support makes a monumental difference in achieving your goals. Thank you to everyone who has helped us and supported us throughout our journey over the past year.